Puritans' attack on the Pequots could not go unanswered. Retaliatory measures commenced immediately, aimed at Saybrook Fort, where Commander Lion Gardiner was forced to endure a constant siege. No one traveling outside the fort was safe. Undermanned and low on provisions, Gardiner needed help. But none would come from Massachusetts. The magistrates were threatened and distracted by the antinomian controversy, an internal theological struggle led by Anne Hutchinson. She attacked the clerical authority of Boston and demanded all of their attention. Meanwhile, Pequot Grand Sachem Sassicus made his next move, sending envoys to his old enemies, the Narragansett. His purpose? To forge an alliance between the two nations in an all-out guerrilla war against the English. Alarmed at such a prospect, John Winthrop and Henry Vane employed the services of a man they had banished under pain of death. His mission was to intervene in the negotiations and prevent a Pequot-Narragansett alliance. This outcast turned special agent was Roger Williams. Williams was a zealous minister who clashed with Boston upon his arrival to New England. He attacked the Massachusetts Bay's patent, blamed unclean magistrates for polluting the congregation, and bashed their grounds for occupying Native American lands. Finally, the magistrates had enough and voted he be exiled to England. But Winthrop had the foresight to see the usefulness of keeping Williams close by as an informant. He was fluent in the Algonquin language after all, and a friend to the Narragansett. Winthrop could use him to gather intelligence that would prove invaluable. He alerted Williams to the banishment and allowed him to flee south, where he settled on land he purchased from Canonicus the previous year. Williams now urged Canonicus to join with the Puritans, but the old sovereign distrusted Europeans and refused to be swayed. He showed no favor toward the Pequots, however, and warned the envoys that war would be reckless. Not even an alliance could turn back the English tide. His nephew and successor, Miantonimo, was easier to deal with. The young, energetic sachem was well disposed toward the English and was called to Boston to sign a treaty with the Bay Colony. They were to be bound in war against the Pequots. Saybrook Fort remained under siege throughout the winter. In April 1637, Pequots approached the fort to parley. This question was important. It was not customary for Algonquins to kill non-combatants, but they had reasons to suspect that the English might. Gardiner's answer was ominous and evasive. The parley failed. Two days later, seven men under Captain John Mason arrived from the Connecticut towns. Captain John Underhill, with 20 men, came from Boston to reinforce the garrison. At Weathersfield, a local chief who was living under the protection of the settlers was abused by them and kicked off the land. He approached the Pequots for retribution. On April 23rd, they struck. In a lightning raid, they attacked the town, killing six men and three women. They took two girls captive, hoping they could make gunpowder. Connecticut's court responded, declaring offensive war against the Pequots. Captain Mason sailed back to Saybrook Fort with 90 soldiers. They were joined by Uncas, Grand Sachem of the Mohegans, and 70 of his warriors. Uncas reached Saybrook first, but was greeted skeptically by Gardiner, who questioned his loyalty and wanted proof of it. Uncas accepted his challenge. He delivered four heads and a live prisoner, who had once lived at the fort. A Dutch ship arrived with intentions to trade with the Pequots. They were allowed to pass if they freed the two captive girls. They succeeded, and the girls gave valuable intelligence to the captains about the enemy. The three commanders now discussed how best to attack. Mason was commissioned to sail his men to Pequot River and assault Sassacus's village, Wineshocks, but both Gardiner and Underhill did not think he was fit for the task. They all agreed that the element of surprise was vital to defeat the more numerous enemy. A new plan was devised. The army would sail to Narragansett Bay, hook up with Miantonimo, and attack the Pequots from the west. As this plan formalized, the antinomian movement collapsed. Winthrop was elected governor, ousting the antinomian Henry Vane. Finally, Boston could focus on the Pequots, and Winthrop sent 40 soldiers to Narragansett Bay. Mason and Underhill arrived first, asking for passage through the country. It was granted, and they marched west to Niantic. The next morning, Miantonimo arrived with his warriors, urging the Niantics to join the fight. 
About 500 Americans now accompanied the English. Their aim was to attack Fort Mystic, where 150 Pequot warriors had recently deployed to guard hundreds of women, children, and elderly. Miantonomo told the English captains that it would be pleasing to all natives if the women and children were spared. At dawn, the English and their allies began the assault. Mason and Underhill split their forces into two groups, intending to enter the fort at the same time. As they approached, the alarm was raised. Fighting was furious in the cramped streets. Captain Mason originally intended to kill the inhabitants with swords and save the plunder, but now he changed tactics. We must burn them. Underhill followed suit. Fires met in the middle, burning all the houses within a half hour. Any Pequot trying to escape, man, woman, or child, was cut down. Finally, the massacre ended. Between 400 and 700 Pequots were killed. The Allies were horrified. Never before had they seen such slaughter. The army was low on food, water, and ammunition. Urgently, they needed to reach Pequot Harbor, where their ships would be waiting to resupply them. The assault on Wineshocks would be delayed. For now, retreat was the only option. But as they marched, they encountered Pequot reinforcements, 300 warriors sent by Sassicus. When they saw the charred remains of Mystic, they were driven into a fit of despair and rage. They now launched themselves at the Puritans. This would be the battle to break the English army or the Pequot nation. <laughs>